Hello and welcome to the Hollywood Experience where we talk about actors, action and things that went right and went wrong during action sequences as well as a few <laughs> tidbits on the sword experience. David, good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, hot and wonderful. Yes, it's it's supposed to be 92 <laughs> degrees today. So if you're listening to this in the wintertime, I envy you. But if it's you're in the summer, then you're right here with us. Well, think about that. Actually, we've got the uh, Sword Experience uh, retreat coming up uh -huh. in the winter. Oh, there so, you so go. You can actually join us there and not have to worry about, you know, the cold weather. Mm -hmm. That's part of it. Actually, that's why we actually did the last one when we did Belize the last time. We actually ended up in uh, uh, November, end of November, which was uh, good because... Or was it beginning of 18th of November? I think, it was, I think it was just before Thanksgiving, that one. No, you're not going to Belize but, this time, are you? No, this time we're going to uh, kind of Playa del Carmen area. Um, it's just above Playa del Carmen. It's a, a private resort. And, uh, you know, they still only have 50%, 60% occupancy. So having getting hold of rooms sometimes mm -hmm. is a little tricky. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I hear that. Uh, so what's going to be uh, going down at the, resort, uh, at the uh, 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 retreat then? Well, this one's a uh, little different than the last. Mm -hmm. Similar but little different. You know, we're going to do training every day. You know, at okay. least three hours, three and a half hours a day of training. And then, uh, but we've also got to things such as swimming with turtles and oh, cool. uh, going into cenotes, which are, for those of you who don't know what cenotes are, which are spelled C-E-N-O-T-E-S. Those are, there are thousands of them in Mexico or in that part of Mexico. Anyway, they're kind of underground or sometimes on ground water holes mm -hmm. that have salt water all fresh water in them a lot of it's salt water have fish in them etc oh, cool. but you can swim in them you can swim underground you can swim through tunnels we won't be going through tunnels because that's a little <laughs> bit too advanced yeah for some people, but you know uh, i've been in them they're absolutely amazing i want to get to our, for, uh, our guest this who week. are you talking to this uh, week amy gumnick okay uh and um you know she's um uh, an actress which uh you know we we like to sort of change up you know who we have on the show mm -hmm. uh, most of the time because uh, you know you can't have the same type of people right you want different angles right you know, different perspectives for, for, things like that exactly exactly um and so amy uh, comes uh, at it from a totally different perspective and we'll talk about what that perspective is after you listen to the interview because i think it's really different uh but similar perspective as we've uh, we've talked about with some of our other guests and some of the things i talk about when we actually do sword experiences live uh in person in at different events so um uh, once we get back from uh, the interview we'll we'll have another little chat about it all right good morning this week we're actually staying in the los angeles area because um uh it's nice and warm here and uh, i have a fabulous guest actually who we both worked on the same tv show but she doesn't know it at the moment amy gumnick good morning how are you I'm great. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. So thank you for coming on. And um, I'll, I'll reveal the show in a second. But um, uh, <laughs> yes, I know. What is it? What is it? Yes. This is basically killing you. Yes. Um, so tell me a little bit about, I mean, actually, we also have something else in common. You actually were a competitive dancer, weren't you? I was. Yes. Were you? Yeah, well, I was. Yeah, I danced for many years. It's before I started doing martial arts. I did choreography and, and dance. So I did uh, jazz ballet. That's when I was young. And Wonderful. That's so funny because every time I'm asked about anything fight related, that always goes back to dance and choreography. It's the same thing. It's, it has to. Movement is movement. I mean, when you do, uh, I was actually, uh, some of our guests actually have done, um, you know, drama school. And when you do drama school, you, you do the whole gamut. You do voice, you do scene study, you do movement. It's, it's all part of what we do as actors. Absolutely. So what what started you off as a dancer? Was it when as a young girl, or did you did you move on uh, later on? And go, oh, I think I'm gonna want to do this. <laughs> uh, no, I started I started dancing, I guess formally as formal as it can be uh, when I was five. And so dance and performance was always a big part of my life. I was always involved in, um, you know, whether it was local dance studio which then turned into more of the competition thing which is very different than it is now um and then that sort of transitioned to theater and musical theater but dance has kind of been a steady sort of my first love uh -huh. um but that i think that that was what introduced me and made me fall in love with the stage and with just performing in general and expressing myself do you find it different as, a, as an actress, uh, you know, uh, as a, 
you know, a performer really you is all around, but sometimes stage is very different than TV and film. I mean, did you find it, you know, drastically different or were you just kind of, ah, oh, fit into this really easily? Um, you know, I think, I think in my mind, I thought it was going to be this very different thing. I grew up doing theater. Um, I studied theater in college. So that was sort of my foundation. Um, I'm sort of classically trained in terms of acting, but I always knew that film and TV is where I wanted to be. I think theater will always be my first love. I will always say yes to an opportunity to get back on stage. Um, but it's really not that different. You know, well, it's yeah. a little bit, I would yeah, I yeah. was actually I was actually talking to uh, uh, an actor yesterday actually that was on my show many years ago, and he's he's he basically does stage and he says I I have this unhealthy relationship between stage and film because I keep going to do the film and then when I've got enough money I go back and do stage because it doesn't pay me anything, you know, <laughs> and that's the balance really, isn't it? It's the crazy drug; it keeps calling you back. But yeah. I think that the I think for a lot of actors who come from a theater background um or who have that in them you sort of can't you can't get away from it it's what feeds you 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 started actually in in california in um santa barbara you're actually from are you originally from santa barbara right I'm actually originally from los angeles oh and you and your family went up to santa barbara or was um, that I went to santa barbara for college um and then i moved back so i was there for four years um i studied acting there and then I graduated and moved back to LA and really sort of rediscovered LA. Growing up in Los Angeles and moving to Los Angeles as an actor are two very different cities. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> here, which was definitely an advantage. I had that support system, um, but it, it was not the LA that I knew growing up. Do you think it's very intimidating for actors when they come in here, you know, from different places to actually get or to understand that the life is that they created for themselves as an actor here is very different than what people actually do when they live here. Oh yeah. I, I mean, you know, I think it's hard for me to answer that because I am from here. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have sort of my roots are here, but yeah, it's, I think that Los Angeles can be a really lonely, overwhelming place if you don't have, or don't create sort of like your family, your support system especially the life of an actor is so unpredictable and so all over the place that I think that you need, you need those people to fall apart to and, and to celebrate with yeah. um, a lot of it is about creating your community, but yeah, I, I can imagine, I, you know, I think moving to any big city on a whim to follow a passion is probably an overwhelming experience. <laughs> what, what, what do you like about acting? I mean, I, you know, people ask me that, but I, I, I kind of, I, you know, what is it that drives you? Because it, it drives everybody slightly differently, I think. <laughs> drives me crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's that. Oh, uh, gosh, that's such, so many answers to that question. And yet no words. Um, I'm sort of one of those weird people that has always known as far back as I can remember that this was for lack of better words, what I was meant to be doing. Um, I, I don't really feel like I chose this. It sort of chose me. Um, and I remember hearing other actors say that when I was younger and I thought that was so cheesy and so cliche, but there is something to what you were just talking about is like being bit by that. It's like a need. Um, for me, I, I love, well, a lot of things. I, I think that the collaboration is unlike anything else. Um, the being part of something where there are so every job is vital and the sort of all hands on deck thing is an environment that I really thrive in. Mm. Um, but more than that, I think that as artists, we have such a tremendous power and obligation, if you will, to use our art for good. This is my Miss America answer. Um, <laughs> But to like teach, heal and inspire, like growing up, I, I was a kid who wanted to be an actress and a doctor and an astronaut and a princess and a and 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 um, and it wasn't until I was late older that I realized I could be all of those things and I wanted to be all of those things because of films that I had seen because I was so impacted by different performances. And so my way of sort of playing out all of those imaginary lives was to figure out a way to do it professionally. And that the answer to that was become an actress. Um, and so I think, you know, if, if I 
whether it's on stage or on screen, if one person is affected by my performance, whether it's, um, you know, it changes the way that they think about something or it shifts their perspective or it just evokes some sort of emotional something, then I think we've successfully done our job. Um, and so having that sort of relationship and impact is something that has always been, I don't know, a, a part of me and something that I value both as the viewer and performer. Right, I've got two, two things. One, one is a comment and one is a question. The comment is, I get what you're saying because I've always performed kind of since I was 13 years old. I was, you know, doing stage plays in, in my local school and stuff and then stopped and played soccer. Then I went on to model and dance and, and do vaudeville type stuff. And and when I got to Los Angeles, it was actually where, really where I got the bug bitten. And I, I, I've talked about this before. It's all, it was that moment I knew I had to do this. It's just, I, I was like, I can't do anything else. It's because I really get what this is. It, it's something from your core that it makes you happy, I guess, makes you exist, makes you important, not important, but I, I don't know, I can't even explain that, but it's really from your gut. And I think that's yeah, a, a comment. That, that's a comment. The other one I had, you okay. mentioned, go ahead, go ahead. I just was, I, I agree. And I think that it's something that is hard to put into words. And I remember when I was in theater school, so many of my professors and mentors would give the, you know, the, the lecture that we've all heard. If there's anything else you can do, go do it. And that always used to infuriate me. And it wasn't until recently, actually, that it sort of, and I teach now. And so now being on the other side, it sort of clicked that I understand what that means. If there is something else that gives you that sense of fulfillment and joy, Joy and happiness that you're talking about go do it because the acting world is crazy and yet if you if you've been bit there's you just have to ride the roller coaster i think there's also um something a lot of actors don't understand is that this business is a is a roller coaster you, you actually hit it right on the neck now sometimes you can be on a tv show you can be doing a great film some careers keep going up, but they never constantly go up. They constantly dip. And in those dips, those are the times you need to have something else or some other passion that you can uh, direct your energies to. Because if you don't, you'll start doubting yourself. You know, if you, do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, absolutely. you know, and as you get older, the roles change. They get different. Uh, I mean, I was talking the other day to somebody and they said, you know, when I started back in the early 90s and the 2000s and stuff it was a different and the eight and the 80s it was a different uh, world of tv and because it was an older audience the younger audiences there were just some people that would come in as actors to, to play those roles now it's switched totally it's a much younger audience because i think of the internet you know yeah. it's a whole different a ball game you know and shorter yeah. things and you know people are stars being youtube stars and things of this nature so it's it's kind of totally different. It is, which I think is exciting because it means it's constantly changing yeah. and evolving and we have no choice but to change and evolve with it. Yes. You know, there's, uh, there's something I, when I teach, uh, as I told you before we came on here, but we had the sword experience where we, you know, I go around and I teach people not only the fact of, of how to do work with a sword and do it safely, but also the fact that the, it is part of a conversation in a, in a, in a fight the continuation of the characters continue through the conversation. And that's a process that I tell people. Well, one of the things I say to them when I have martial artists and people from HEMA, which is uh, historical European martial art, all these different people coming to me, I say to them, look, you know, it might not be the same as what you do, but the one fact, one line that I've always uh, thought was very important was for a species to survive, it has nothing to do with their intelligence or strength, but with their ability to adapt. And if you don't adapt especially in this environment we found ourselves in the past year, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah, I think that's the biggest takeaway from this last year and a half craziness that we're in is I think we've all really seen exactly what you just said to its extreme. Yeah. So the other thing was, was a question, what movies did uh, get you kind of interested when you were younger? I mean, I, I had a couple, I had Flash Gordon when I was a kid and Errol oh. Flynn and things like that, you know, this is way back, you know, so uh, what, what, what ones were really kind of, uh, you can remember that inspired you? Um, yeah. The first one that I, the first tangible memory that I have of sitting in the theater and thinking, I want to be up there, um, was actually, I think I was... 
I was pretty young. I was probably, I think I was about nine. Um, and I went to see the film version of Hamlet, Kenneth Branagh, Kate Winslet film. Um, and it was like four hours long. There was an intermission. I had never seen Shakespeare before. Um, and, you know, I went with my family and my parents were fully intending to leave after the first break. Uh, and I was just glued to the screen. I, I remember at intermission, everybody got up, you know, and what movie has intermission? Yeah. Shakespeare. Um, everyone got up and got when got drinks and popcorn. And I was just like paralyzed in my seat. I did not mm. leave. And did I had to watch every credit. Um, and that was the first, you know, I don't even, I, I fully understood what was going on, obviously, as a nine year old, I'm sure a lot of it went over my head. Um, but there was something magical happening on that screen that I was just completely captivated by.